Hey guys, thanks for stopping in today. Today we are wet felting pretty little flowers. It takes just a tiny amount of wool. Some bling really helps and maybe even some beads or uh, repurposed jewelry from your jewelry box. It's such a fun project, great for teachers, great for Mother's Day, great for gifts and decor around the house. So stay tuned and if this is your first time joining us, hit the subscribe button so you get notified every time we upload a new video. Let's jump into our project. This is what we're making today. Some cute little fancy wet felted flowers and there's so many varieties that you can make these with. These are the ones that I'm going to show you how to do today and it just takes a couple of really simple supplies. So let's look at the fibers uh, first and we are going to be using some really basic uh, colors of merino top. I have French vanilla and white which is a natural white, a daffodil that's what this one is made with French vanilla in white and this one is with daffodil and then this one is actually the Sunset Bliss Merino Silk Blend with some other fibers and hanky as well. So we're going to make these today and it only takes a few supplies. If you feel that it's challenging for you to pull those together, we have a wet felting a flower kit and I have that for you. We have a wet felting a flower kit and it comes with, they're always a different variety, but we try and offer things that are very similar. You're going to get merino top, merino soap blends, and then you'll also get some luster fibers. These are uh, some sari silk waste. There might be some locks in there. There might be some tussa silk in there. Just something to give it a little bit of bling. So in this kit, we show you how to make different kinds of flowers. So this is kind of an add-on. You'll get different instruction in the kit than we're giving today on our free video. Some little beads of your choice. I don't have a lot of super glamorous beads, but if you don't have a great bead collection, you might look at some old jewelry, earrings, necklaces. Uh, these are some cheapy little bracelets that I have, and these can be a great source for adding some decoration to your other felted elements. You might use a pin back or some magnets to decorate, you know, finish off your piece. I'm going to be using just a sewing needle. I chose a long one today for no apparent reason. Some thread, some scissors, and I'm going to be using this to plan my layout size. A ball brass if you like. I like to also use a kitchen sponge and um, some olive oil soap and mesh. That's plus some towels, that's all we need to work today. We have a towel. This is our super bubble. You could use bubble wrap if that's what you have. This is just a standard work surface for me. It's kind of like the sauna pool covers that you might get, but ours is clear and it's actually a little more durable than the average. This I'm gonna use just to plan the size of my flowers. Now what I like to do is just put this underneath uh, so that I know how much I wanna lay it out. This flower is a little different, so I'm going to lay this one out first. This one is trimmed with bamboo. You could also use silk, tussa silk, whatever decorative fibers you have, and merino wool in between. And this is the sari silk waste right here. So I'm going to show you how I lay this one out first. It is from recycled old saris that have been shredded up. The silk fabric has been shredded up and turned into this madness. So you always have to cut it. You just can barely tear it apart. Cut this up and put it right here, wherever you want it. So I'm just gonna cut it. It's crazy stuff, but it's really fun. It adds great texture, great surface design. So I'm just gonna stretch it out and spread it out a little bit. And so it's going to be right there in the middle of my flower. And now for this surface treatment right here, we're going to cut this fiber. We're going to cut this fiber and spread it all around the edges. So I'm going to cut about an inch. Uh, an inch and then we're going to spread it all the way around.
And here's all you want to do. This is going to basically be the perimeter of my flower. And I'm going to spread this lustery, shiny fiber out so that it extends over a little bit. And it can be kind of dense. We're going to anchor it to the wool. The wool, this fiber, this is uh, bamboo fiber, it does not felt, but it will intermingle with the wool, which does felt. So you always want this to be near wool in some way. You can put silk on silk, but you want there to be some wool to migrate up through it. And I have my fibers here. Uh, we'll use the same color, the daffodil, which is such a nice, soft yellow. And when you have these contrasts, they look really good together. So working with merino top, we, it doesn't even take that much. The flowers are weighing like not even a tenth of an ounce. So I'm just gonna pull off about a foot here. And if you're new to working with this fiber or maybe sometimes you lay it down too thick or are lacking a little bit of control, split the thickness of the top. This is commercially combed top. Sometimes people call it roving. Not too worried about that, but it just comes in this long length. This is a nice 19 micron fiber, but you want to divide it so that it's easy to control. And I'm just gonna pull off little wisps just like this. And what I want is to just barely overlap these fibers on the perimeter. And so we're just going to create a nice little overlapping circle. And you can also just jump over to this side and then go back and fill in. It doesn't really matter. I want it just to be nice and even. And first we'll make a nice thin layer and then we're going to go back and fill in a little bit more. Now you could use wool for this perimeter as well if you don't have something shiny. It's just the shiny adds a real nice element. And you'll find that some of the, what we call luster and luxury, like the luster fibers, or sometimes we call them our bling fibers, not only do they shine a bit, but they also can kind of squiggle out and do some fun textury things in your surface design. And it's just nice to have that especially on something like a flower. So I don't need much more, but wherever I can kind of see the background underneath, I'm gonna fill in just a little bit. I don't want my flower to have holes in it. I want everything to be full. But notice that when I'm laying it out, that it's real wispy and light. It's very light, it's not thick. And that's just my preference for this flower. I'm not trying to extend the wool over and I'm not trying to cover all this orange. I really want the orange to extend out. Okay, so there's that. You always, whenever you lay out something, you always wanna put your hand on it and see, does it feel even while it's dry? Fill in any bare spots while it's dry. Okay, so that is a nice, big, fluffy flower. And I'm gonna trim the edge again. And Anne has been industriously <laughs> Cutting me. Thank you, Anne. I'll we'll take all of this. Thank you very much. I have lots. So if anybody needs some, just come get some off my table. <laughs> Anne cut me a bunch. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing we did in the beginning, and that's just kind of spread these out and sandwich them right back over. And the wool that's underneath is going to grab onto it. So let's fill in this again.
In the center, I just put a little bit of neps, uh, and neps are little bits of felted wool. So I brought some of those for you today. We sell them in lots of colors, and they're just these little tiny uh, bits of wool. They are 100% wool, and whatever you add, they will not stick 100%. So you just kind of have to surrender to that and know that that's part of the gig. But we'll try and get as many to stay on as we can. And these are little different colors than I had on that one, but I'm just going to kind of mix them up a little bit and plunk them right down in the middle there. Right there. Now, to help anchor them down, and if you're concerned about any of this being too thick, take your same fiber, but in this case, take the tiniest, tiniest, almost see-through bits and just do a little webby right across the top and that will help anchor those down. Okay, so that's this guy all laid out. Okay, so I'm gonna put another little clump. We're just gonna repeat this one, but the difference on this one is I'm gonna put some of that bamboo, white bamboo on the outside so that the outside of the, fl the flower has a nice sheen to it. And white bamboo is just so pretty, so just you can be as generous or as frugal with that as you want. And I'm just going to, actually, I'm going to put this on top of the bamboo. So I'm going to put the bamboo down first. And if you have static in the air, like if it's a really dry day, sometimes the silk or the bamboo um, is very clingy to you or maybe it wants to stand up. Uh, you can mist your work area with a little bit of water and you can also put lotion on your hands if it's really sticking to you. So I've just made a big pile of this stuff here and then we're going to plop our green down right on top of that. And now for the inside, we're going to use our white wool. How are you doing, Miss Ann? We're doing really good. A couple of our felting friends, we do have some great questions right now. Yeah. Just, uh, a couple of our felting friends want to know the diameter of the template. Oh, that is a great question. I meant to get out my ruler. Let's see. We were so busy trying to find a way to go live. It's about uh, five and a half inches. That's what I'm working on right now. The, my little inside line is about five and a half inches. Okay. And then a couple of our folding prints want to know if you can use locks in the center of your flower, and if you can use locks, what what type would be best? Oh, just any any locks will felt. I'm all backwards today. Any locks will felt. Um, so any wool locks will felt pretty much. So. I would just play with them a little bit. And you know, I wanted to mention that making little flowers like this is such a great way to do samples. Sampling colors together, sampling materials together. So um, play with that idea. I realize I had this backwards all along. I had it figured out. So I'm gonna put my green on after. So here we go. I'm gonna just lay the wool on top just like we did with the other flower. And I'll flip it over uh, when we start felting and put that green on there. I know that the white is a little bit more challenging to see, but when we finish it, you're going to have a nice little bit of contrast. And I'm going to um, see if I have time to give you one more uh, layout suggestion. We plan to show you three today. This trim, just putting your bling in all the middle, and uh, one more. So yeah, with locks, just to just play with locks and experiment with them a little bit because some locks behave differently. Like a, a mohair tends to not uh, felt, but it adds such a nice bit of sheen. So you can still anchor down the ends. And I'll, um, let me grab some locks here in a second and I'll just explain how you might work them in. Okay, so that's my layer of wool. Now I'm going to go back and actually add more of the bamboo right on top. And you really can be generous with this. It's going to go its own way. It's going to spread itself out and get all wily on you. Which is really the fun of it, is just letting it kind of do its thing. And then I'm going to add some purple on top.
Okay, so this is my um, purple Tessa silk, and man, it's just so pretty. So I am going to put this on here too, just not quite as thick. I want it to come from the center. Let me see here. I'm going to cut it. And for our felting friends that have just joined us, if they don't have any embellishment fiber, can they just use wool? Oh yeah, absolutely. This one is just wool and no embellishment fiber. And so the difference you see, it's, it's wool in a merino silk blend is that it's just a little more flat. It's not quite as uh, strong. It doesn't have like as much sheen. So that is absolutely fine. Okay. And I'm all, I'm all staticky now and my AC has stopped. So this is getting a little crazy. I've lost my scissors. <laughs> okay. So when these felt, you're just going to want to let them go whatever way they want to go. And now, okay, in the center here, I'm going to put even more silk. I'm going to put it just right here in the middle. And then I'm going to even put some wool naps right in there. Friends want to know: Is there a big shrinkage rate with the bamboo? Um, or how does the bamboo felt? It's going to felt like this, so it's going to squiggle out. You see how it kind of squiggles out there? Bamboo and Tessa silk are going to be very similar. Um, and you can you see what that looks like there? Okay, it's just going to kind of squiggle out and kind of cluster together. So just play with it. Add a little bit. See what you like and what you don't like. Okay, that's these, that's these two right here. And this one I know is a little messy because I couldn't find my scissors for a second. <laughs> you could cut the fibers if they're too long so they kind of stay where you want them. The difference with this one is we made a, the base layer is just a silk hanky. And if you don't know what that is, a hanky is actually a silk cocoon that has been stretched over a frame into a square and in this case they've been dyed. So there are very, they stick to every part of your being that touches them and to get them apart you have to just give them a real big tug. So for this orange flower, this was actually a hanky just piled into the circle, literally just pile it into a circle and then continue your layout, whatever you lay out. I laid out this hanky, this fiber, and then bling fibers over the top, bringing it down, making it a little more anchored, more towards the, uh, I don't know, mauve, a little more towards the mauve. So that's an idea too, and that's why you see these two are completely different colors. But let's get to felting. What I have here is my mesh, and this is just a barrier for your hands. If you, We sell this in our shop, of course. Everything we're showing with you today, we sell in our shop. If you don't have mesh, uh, people use different fabrics, but you could also use a bubble wrap, like the standard kind of bubble wrap you get from the store. You could also use plastic. It's just a little different process, and sometimes I use that just to demonstrate. But the reason I like this is because I can feel what's happening with the fiber through the mesh. So I'm gonna just pull out my template and that's a good reason to kind of save those things back so that you can use them over and over. This is our olive oil soap, which we import from France. It's absolutely fabulous. It's gonna be easy on your hands and it creates a really nice gliding surface. This is my favorite household utensil that I use to wet out. It's just a sponge, and this is how I wet out. My soap is dry, so let it dry in between uses. Load your sponge with water, and then add soap and water to your project, just like this. A couple of our felting friends want to know, if they don't have any of our mesh on hand for today, can they use something 
some other kind of netting like tulle? Some people like tulle, like the kind of tulle you get at the fabric store. The only thing to be mindful of if it's very snaggy, like this stuff really allows your hands to glide and some tulle is a little more rough. And so I think people can have challenges with it. People even have challenges with this if they're too heavy handed. So um, give it a go. But if it's too snaggy, then you would be better off to either put a thin sheet of painter's plastic or bubble wrap over the top, wet and soap your hands and rub through the top. Um, at least for a little while until you get all the fibers holding together. Now, just like always when we felt, the first thing we do is we mash everything down. Um, you just want to get the water pushed all the way through and all the air out. We start to rub initially very gently, very gently, like I always describe it like almost as if you were rubbing lotion on a baby's back. So you want to be very, very gentle at first. And I would think of pulling the fibers to the center, to the center, to the center. You don't want to disturb your design. If your design is moving around under there, then ease up your pressure a little bit. Don asks, why do you use the soap when you wet felt and not just the water? The soap provides a nice glide for your hands. It also, especially with thicker projects, acts as a little bit of glue and helps hold the water in and the fibers together. So initially, that's kind of what it's important for, but also it helps make like a nice lubricant so that your hands will glide across the fibers. Devin asks, if you use plastic, should you wet out the wool before you put the plastic yeah. back on? Yeah, if you use plastic, you have to wet out the fiber before you put it down. Now, before you go too far, especially when you're working with the mesh and if you're new, you're going to want to peel it back because you don't want to use so much pressure that the fiber sticks to your mesh. So notice that one hand holds everything in place and then the other hand just peels back. The bamboo and stuff is really going to, you know, want to cling to it at first. So just peel it back and then that's all you need is to know nothing's sticking. Okay, then we can go back. So there's a lot of water in my project right now. I'm not going to leave it so soggy, but in the beginning, we're just trying to form a surface skin. I'm not even trying to felt all the way through. I'm just trying to kind of form a surface skin here and get everybody playing together. And then I'm going to take a little bit of water out. But I am going to, before I go too far with this guy, I, since I didn't quite get him laid out, I'm going to put that green on there. <laughs> I'm determined. Where is he? Right here. Okay. Here's that green I wanted right in the middle. Okay, there we go. I just wanted him on there. Okay. So, you're gonna massage it for just about five minutes. These are gonna go really fast once you get them going. And then increase your pressure just a little bit, but be mindful that you're not shifting the design around. If you wanna move this stuff around at all, now's the time. Move them around a little bit. And after you've rubbed just about five minutes, then I want you to blot out just a little bit of water. And I have a backup towel right here. Okay, blot out just a little bit of water and what that's going to do is bring the fibers actually a little closer together. Soap up your hands again because if you put your hands right back on it, as soon as you've taken water out, it's going to want to stick. And sticking is going to cause friction when you want to really control that friction. So lightly, 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 peel back your mess, make sure it's not sticking, lightly, lightly, lightly. So Sandra asks, so you can add fibers and add things to the project as long as it's in progress? That's, well, not as, not as long as it's in progress, but before it's too far felted. So you want to, in that case, I hadn't even really started rubbing and I just added it while it was still wet. But yes, you can add things after you get going a little bit and, uh, you know, I say that with a grain of salt because you're going to have to learn your fibers. You're going to have to learn them um, and know when you can still add things. But these things, we hadn't even really started felting them yet. 
Okay, so now I've rubbed them a little bit, and really what I want you to know is that one, the fiber is so fine, and two, the project is so thin that they're gonna actually felt up for us pretty quickly. So I am going to gently lift up my little piece and turn it over. We're gonna rub from the back a little bit. Notice how it's already kind of holding together, but it's super delicate. And these are intentionally very thin, delicate, graceful little flowers. But now I'm gonna increase my pressure a little bit. You still don't want it to pill beneath your touch or to stick to your mesh. If either of those things are happening, you're gonna have to reduce your pressure a little bit. Now let me ask, are these too delicate to roll? There's no reason to roll them because we don't want them, we don't want them to distort too much. We're not, I should say, we're not gonna roll them the traditional way. I'm gonna show you right now how we're gonna felt them besides rubbing. Now you could rub them the whole time and we are gonna roll them in a sense, Melanie, but we're gonna roll them differently than we normally do. Now if you have something on there like this that you don't want, just get it out of there now. And if it feels like anything is not binding, um, you can either add a little fiber if you want or just felt it a little bit more. Okay, so once these little flowers are kind of holding together, they're very delicate, very, very delicate, especially this part. So I'm gonna rub it a little bit more. We're gonna felt them in our hands. I'm just gonna rub this one a little bit more. Go back, so we've gone in circles, so go back and forth and up and down and back and forth and up and down and go at some angles. You want to vary those angles a little bit because what we're doing, remember, is we're getting all these fibers to entangle with each other. And so to do that, you kind of want to vary your methods a little bit. Once they're kind of holding together and you have these little sort of fragile pancakes, you can put your thumb in the middle let the whole flower just kind of dangle over your hand, let all the edges come back, and then you can roll it like this. Gentle now, gentle, gentle, gentle. Gentle, gentle, gentle. Now, don't go too far and unfold it and come back. You can rub it on your hands like this, have your hand in the middle. Kind of just, we're just kind of squeezing and mushing and squeezing and mushing. Add soap to your hands. You can uh, roll it a little bit more. It's still very delicate, so don't be too uh, aggressive with your fingers. But what we're doing is that merino top in here is migrating through this bamboo that we have on the edges very nicely. So once you've done this a couple of times and see how wet mine still is, you've done it a little bit, you've done it on your hands, you can even roll it back and forth. Notice that I go gently and then I open it and gently and then I open it. If you go too far, it's gonna to stick to itself and then you'll be sorry. So now that I've gone back and forth a little bit, I'll fold it all up and I'll go this way just a little bit. I am rolling this so delicate, like you're rolling a cannelloni or something, you know, like delicate, delicate, delicate. It's wow. Wendy shares fragile pancakes. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so now my piece is still really soggy, but what we've done is we have a nice little soft felt going. And so what I'm gonna do is just squeeze some water out right into my bucket. Video stopped again. That's okay, we're just gonna keep going. I don't know what to do. I mean, we've gotta just record. Okay, so we're, we've squeezed some water out. And I'm gonna add some soap. and we're still rolling. Now, if these are the, for your first time felting or your first time you know, making something this, this light and delicate, you might be unsure whether it's finished. And just know that if you let it dry overnight, that you can come back and see if it's done. And by done, you just want it to hold together when you wear it or use it for whatever purpose that you use it for. So I love how these edges of the bamboo just kind of get all crazy and um, like a, I don't know, like a little sunburst. So you can felt yours some more. And I am going to look at this other one for a real quick second. For those who are watching the playback, um, the live feed has stopped, so this would be where it ended. 
I don't know what minute we're at. And notice that I'm just kind of patting the center. If your little nebs don't stick, some of them you can let go and other ones you can try and needle felt down if you want. And I like to, once I get to this phase, also kind of ball it up in my hands a little bit. Very gentle, very gentle, very gentle. But it's all sticking together and everything is staying nicely. Undo it repeatedly. The most important thing is you want to treat it evenly so that your flower doesn't get too lopsided. And then you can also tug on bits like where you want it to maybe spike up a little bit. You can tear these apart a little bit so that you have a little more dynamics in your flower. Whatever you like, you can, you know, pull this down, pull this up and this down at the same time and kind of give it peaks, peaks and valleys along the edges. And this one would be fun even if you, you know, if you throw it a little bit, it's going to help just everything kind of, kind of jig a little. <laughs> I don't know what it is about throwing. It causes everything just to kind of scrunch in a fun way. So what we'll do with this one is we will rinse all the soap out and then we'll soak it in a little water vinegar bath for 15 minutes. That would just be like a little cup of water with a little splash of vinegar once all the soap is rinsed out and that helps the fiber, the wool, get back to its natural pH uh, which is going to help it be a little bit softer and have a little more sheen. And we would felt the other one the exact same way, just using these same techniques. So you can pull and tug the edges. You can move the whole thing around a little bit, like if you're trying to shape it at all. And when you go to, once you've rinsed everything out and you've done your vinegar soak, then if you wanted to have some nice folds and creases, ball it all up like this and tie it with some string and let it dry overnight so that you kind of bind it and then when you unfurl it it's going to have a little more of the the peaks and the swirlies like this one does so this one will dry very much like this one and let's look at how to do the fancy stamens really fast so i'll move the rest of this stuff away once your flower has dried overnight, if you want to add like a fancy little beaded stamen, I didn't use wire or anything. I chose just to use the same wire that, uh, I'm sorry, the same thread that I have at home, which is just regular Guterman or even just my quilting thread. Where's that? Yeah, so one of these is um, polyester and one of them is cotton. So this is like the one, the gold one is the one that you would sew blue jeans with and this is just cotton. And I'm just choosing thread that matches either the flower or the beads. So I just have a couple of tips on this, not that you couldn't figure it out, but things that I learned in doing my own is the first thing is whenever you have your your primary bead, whatever's going to be the end bead, start with the end bead. So start with whatever's going to be your end bead and tie that one on first. Like literally run your thread through there and then tie a knot. Now we won't do that. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, when, put your very end bead on first and tie a knot on that and then add your other beads. And that's just going to give you the anchor that you need. I have a bigger bead on the bottom, so you could add a little tiny bead down here if you want to be able to knot it in place. But when you sew it through the flower, and I wanted to sew it on, I'll put it on this flower. I think that'll go perfect. Here's what I suggest is run one end of the thread through at a time so that then you can knot it on the bottom of the flower. So I'm just taking one of the threads and I'm going to run it right down through the center and out the bottom. Just like that. And then the other end out through the bottom at just a slightly different location so that when you knot it, it'll stay. Okay, so now I have both threads through the bottom and then I'm going to tie that into a knot. If you make your thread long enough, then if you decide to sew a pin back, you will 
have enough thread, you can use the same thread to sew the pin back. So we often get asked about pin backs, and I would say don't glue it. Instead, sew it on there. Just sew it right in place. Now, I prefer magnets so that you don't rip your clothes, but if pin backs are for you, then great. And if you want to do magnets, what I would say is to stitch a little magnet under a piece, put it on here and stitch a little piece of felt over the top. You could even make a, a matching piece of felt so that you hide it um, and give yourself, you know, a double magnet. But there's that flower and I think it looks really fun and kind of pops with a little fancy stamen in it. Um, and you can sew this on to something in your home, whether it's, you know, napkin rings or a spring wreath or any decoration that you want to, at all. And they really do go that fast. Like this one, I would felt it like probably four more minutes and be done with it. And it's going to dry every bit as beautiful as this guy. So I hope you guys have fun with that. And for everybody who sat through these technology issues on the live feed, well, hey, good. And for everyone who is catching the playback, um, hopefully you saw everything you need to to make your little flowers. We'll, the first week of April, we'll look at making some stems and leaves if you want to make something a little more full and put it in a vase or maybe make a, a flower necklace or something like that. I hope you had fun today. I hope you enjoyed making your little flowers. If you did, please leave us a comment below. We would love to hear from you. Also, be sure to upload yours on our Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash groups slash living felt friends. Such an awesome community. You'll really want to be part of it and share everything you make. So I'll look forward to seeing you and your wet felted flowers over there. Thanks y'all. Have a great day.